All right, YouTube, what's going on, man? So, I don't know, I'm just going to play a bunch of stuff on a, uh, a silver, kind of a new acquisition that I got, a silver uh, brass buyer unicorn. <laughs> I've said this before, I really love those horns, man. They're pretty cool, uh, and they're really cheap. I think I got this one for like 400 bucks, and I mean, it looked a mess when I got it, I'll be, I'll be honest, but since I've, I have one already, uh, and I actually have their pro level horn, the 916 uh, 1B 2B, or 2B 1B, um, brass buyer stuff, even their entry level stuff is just outstanding. Uh, I can't recommend them enough. I mean, you know, they're not perfect, right? But I mean, for four or 500 bucks, I mean, and these things are like a thousand dollars new. So they don't have much of a resell. And I think it's because of, uh, perhaps a lack of brand recognition. I don't know, but I really like them a lot and uh, they're cheap. So I, I have quite a few of them now, <laughs> but I'm playing that I'm going to play the silver one. Uh, that I recently got. And, you know, the valves have, they probably need to get cleaned up a little bit. I mean, I just did it all myself. I just, you know, washed it and, and gave it a little bath and then oiled everything up. But there, there's some sluggishness to them. But man, it's just, I don't know, it's a great horn. So, I, you know, again, I can't encourage people enough to, to, if you have the opportunity to try stuff out, even if you haven't heard of it before, you know, I mean, you, you can be pretty safe that anything made in Japan is really good. You know, I mean, obviously Yamaha's from Japan and they've been making instruments over there for a long time. Uh, even some of the, you know, I play guitar. So even some of the guitars like the Fender uh, Japan guitars that are made in Japan are just outstanding instruments. So they do a really good job over there. So you can feel pretty confident if you see one of these and, and you pick it up. It's not going to be a, a clunker or a piece of junk, but even still. And, you know, I don't want this to sound too cavalier, but, you know, 400 bucks, that's nothing for uh, a brass instrument, right? That's super cheap. So the fact that this thing can play at all is pretty good, but I mean, it really, really plays quite well. Uh, I like it a lot. I, I honestly, I actually play the, the unicorns more than I play <laughs> the pro level horns that I have. I really, I, I really dig it. It's it just, and again, it, go, it speaks to like whatever works for you, man. I mean, if, if that's the horn that works for me, then, you know, it's kind of, I, I, I guess you just go to what feels good and what makes you feel confident when playing. And I've said this before, right? That's the most important thing is not the brand, not what it looks like. You know, it's, it's how, what you can do with it. Because in the end, these instruments are just tools, right? And if, if you use one tool better than the other, in the end, does it really matter which tool it is? No, it matters what you produce with it. At least that's my opinion. Um, so, you know, I can say that I have a, a huge collection of stuff in my little home studio. You know, I've got like, 15 guitars, bass guitars, regular guitars, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, you know, all kinds of different stuff. And there's, there's something to be said for, um, you know, having a selection like that, because I have found, and maybe you have too, that there are days when I'll try a different mouthpiece on a trumpet or a different trumpet altogether. And I just play it better than I had the last time I played it. And I find that strange, but I don't know what that is, but it keeps me holding on to all these instruments and continuing to be a collector as well. You know, I, I can't say how nice it is to have uh, a whole bunch of mouthpieces to choose from. I just picked up a couple of Warburton mouthpieces that I've have sitting in my cases probably for two, three years now, and I haven't played them in a while. And I put one in my flugel this morning, and I'm like, oh, my God. I just, you know, I guess the mouthpiece thing, it'd be great if one did it all. But, you know, it, it's hard to find that. Uh, you know, and I've got some really nice ones, some, some Lotus stuff. I like Bach a lot. I have some Yamaha, Shilke. I, I have a really diverse, you know, uh, Puji. I have, I have a lot of cool stuff. And I guess my point is that it's really nice to have the ability to pick something or try something new from your house. So I'm not saying everybody can go out there and forward a hundred mouthpieces. I mean, you know, that's a lot of money, right? I get it, <clears throat> but I can. So I think it's really cool. And my comment is, it's really nice to have that that option on the daily. So if I get stale with my playing or something just doesn't feel or sound right, I just chuck in another mouthpiece or pick up a different horn and just get re-inspired. And you know, I've been watching some videos on YouTube of some, you know, I'm really into bass guitar. I'm, and you know, truth be told, I'm a terrible bass guitar player. <laughs> I just love bass guitar, uh, but I'm not a very good player at all. I can play, but I'm not, you know, any kind of Jocko or something like that. <clears throat> not to compare myself to one of the best bass players of all time, but just saying I'm, I'm nothing like that. But um, nevertheless, I've been watching some really cool videos about guys that just have instruments that it's the same thing. They say the same thing. These are real pros. They're just like, you know, this is the one I just keep going to. And it, 
you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, Eddie Van Halen's guitar. It's just these weird, clunky, handmade, you know, jacked up looking crazy instruments that just, that's the one that works for them. And that's what they play. And, you know, on the outside looking in, all of us look at that and go, wow, that's so cool. But I mean, really, I've seen some of this stuff up close and they're terrible. I mean, it's like, I would never want to play that. That's not for me, but it works great for them. So, you know, I guess you got to find your own thing and, and find your own way. But remember that it it's you in the end that really makes the difference in, in all of this and, and what you play, whether you think so or not. I don't think that at any point in your life, any instrument that you might look at as like the Holy Grail will ever really be the instrument that you're playing because it's never the same perception when you're looking at something else as opposed to what you have in your possession. So I know, sorry, fell off the deep end there for just a second, but I've been kind of going down this road trip of, uh, you know, reality and, and what things mean <laughs> to me and my my point of view and my perspective as opposed to, you know, what someone else might perceive of me uh, or about me. Um, you know, so interesting stuff for me. Anyway, that's kind of where I am in my life. But let me play some clips on this silver horn. And, and this is just noodling. So this is kind of what I do. A lot of folks, you know, ask questions like, how do you practice? What what do you, you know, this is what I do. I just play. And I, I kind of go by that rule of if you practice 20 minutes or more every single day, uh, you know, in, in a period of time, you will be exponentially better. So it's more about the consistency than, it, to me, really what you're doing. Now, in, you could argue against that and say, well, sure, if you keep playing the same scale and never learn anything new, you don't really evolve. But I don't mean that. I mean, you know, do your thing, practice, play in your books, whatever it is you do. I like Clark a lot. I play that stuff. <clears throat> But really, it's, it's, it's again, it's about the consistency, doing it over and over and over and over and over and just getting so comfortable in your own skin that things just start happening. And I mean, that's so true in so many facets of life that you have to move forward to be able to see the next level. You cannot stay still and have a different perspective or a different view. It doesn't work that way. You have to continue to iterate. And, you know, pulling from my software development career, that that's what I do for a living. Um, I manage engineering teams. That That's one of the biggest keys to any success is as hard as it is to get started or keep going, you, you have to. You have to make those steps forward because every literal step forward now presents you with new information that you didn't see a step backward from where you are now. So you have to make that step. Even if you trip and fall on your face, you've still moved forward in some manner. So now you have different options presented to you potentially that will take you down a better or different path. So try that, but check out these cool little licks I'm running here. Thank <laughs> you. 
like my hat I went outside uh, so in case you were wondering I just let all that stuff play through listen to all that noise uh, yeah so there's all kinds of mistakes and stuff and there was a reason for doing that so that you could uh, it's okay who cares post whatever you post yeah. I'm just having fun that's what I practice that's what I play peace <laughs>